this is where we stopped in the last part after changing the host's name. Now, let's see how we can use this domain as our name servers. Throughout the video, we have used Cloudflare. Now, we are going to use our server as the DNS provider. So let's see how to do that. So I'm going to create two DNS records. So we're going to have ns1.that and ns2.that. And I can go to manage. So I'm using Namecheap for this example, but you should feel free to follow along with any domain provider that you're using. So I'll manage, I'll go to manage the domain on Namecheap. I'll come here under DNS advanced dns so the first thing i should do for that domain is to change the name servers back to namecheap because currently the name servers for this domain are cloudflare so if i go back i can change and that's also there so that link will just bring you back to domain and here i need to change if i scroll down under name servers i need to change the name servers the name servers back to namecheap basic dns and once i do that i can just click there on save and after saving you should now be able to manage various dns things for this domain so if i scroll all the way up and i go back to advanced dns i should see the dns records for my domain right so there they are so what i want to do here is i need to create parent name servers for my domain so let's come down that's usually somewhere down here you can see here on namecheap they're called personal dns server depending on your dns provider it will probably be called child name servers and that's also common so look for child name servers or personal name servers and that's what we are going to create here so we're going to register a name server for our domain so i'm going to click there on add name server and i can just call it ns1 and the ip address is the ip address of your server so if you have multiple ips you can use multiple ips and you can have multiple ips connected to cpanel unfortunately i only have the one ip address and that's the one i'm going to use for this example so where can i get my ip where can i get my ip and just copy it okay let me just go back to my server so here I can just do IP route and that is my server's IP. Copy. And I'll come back to advanced DNS and I'll paste. So there, put in the IP address of your cPanel where WHM is installed. That's the IP address you're going to put there. And then you can click on done. So name server successfully registered. We need to add another one. Let's add, before I add another one, let's just click on search to see if that's been registered. And you can see it is there. It's now registered for my domain. So I'll add the second name server and I will just choose NS2. You can use any of this here, but I'm going to go with NS2. And then I'm going to paste in my IP once again, click outside and then click on done. Uh, the IP address, paste it again, and then I'll click on done. And then I can click there on search. So this means that I can now use my two, I can now use my two name servers as name servers for any of my domains. I just have to connect them back to my cPanel. So if you want to change, if you want to use your name servers anywhere else, you can use them now. Let's just come back to cPanel and we're going to change our name servers. That was here under server configuration. To change the name servers for cPanel, the default name servers for cPanel, I can just change it here under server configuration under basic web host manager setup. I can add that there, paste, paste, and of course this will be NS2, and I'm going to save changes.
All right. So the moment of truth. First of all, let's go and test our domains. You know what? The first website I can actually test with this new name servers is that domain. So if I come back here and I change this back to custom and I give it the name servers for itself and I give it the name servers that I've just created. If it points back to our cPanel server, then everything is working correctly. And then we can now test if our name servers have been properly propagated. So I can just do DNS check, DNS checker. And let me check the NS for this domain. So remember, we are checking, we are checking the domain and I'm going to do NS check, search. And if you scroll down, you're going to see that in certain areas, it has not propagated, but in certain areas, it is correctly pointing to my name servers. So this means that I just need to give it time to propagate properly. So if you want to add any website, make sure you add the records early in advance. So let's see how to add a website with our records. So the process for adding a website to your cPanel, now that you have your own name servers registered, the process is this. You first of all go to your domain provider and change your name servers to reflect this two name servers that you've just created. Every domain will use this. All the domains you create now will use this. If you have customers, make sure that wherever the domain is registered, they go there and they change their name servers to the ones you've just registered. And then after that, they can now go to cPanel. And let's just do an example here with cPanel accounts. So list accounts, I want to log into one account. Let's log into the account we created last time. To log into this account, I'm just going, I'm just going to click there on CP, cPanel. And that should log me into the cPanel account for that user. I want to add a website so I can come down, search for domains, or I can just search for domain there. And I'm going to click on domains. And now I can add another domain here. Create a new domain. Enter the domain there paste. Of course, I want to add for this domain. So I don't want it to share. So this is an add-on domain. I already have a main domain here. That's why it's asking you to share the root folder with that domain. If you don't want to share the root folder, you can uncheck that and it's going to create its own root folder. This is a better way of management. So I'm going to uncheck that and have this in its own public directory folder. And then, of course, it will be like a subdomain of this. As long as it's an add-on domain, it's usually a subdomain of that, but you can still access it using that domain. So I'm just going to click on Submit. I'm going to click on Submit and just give it time to create what it's creating. And now that everything has been created, we can click there to go and access the domain. We can test using a VPN. So if you open a VPN and I'm just going to use I'm just going to use the Opera browser for this because it has an inbuilt VPN. If I click there, that's going to enable VPN. And let's try Americas and see if our DNS has propagated in wherever this location is. The Americas, that's probably South America. So I'm going to paste and go. And you can see in the Americas, South America, the domain has propagated, right? So this is cPanel. If I go to my cPanel and I create anything inside of that directory, and I can go to that, if I click there on that link, this should take me to the file manager. So we are now under public HTML for that domain. So here, let's create a new file. Let's create a new file dot html index dot html and then i create the new file and it's empty so 
we shouldn't have any problems all right so you can see dns is working properly so just a, a recap of how to use your own dns records this is something that is not available with every domain provider certain domain providers don't have this so if your domain provider doesn't have this make sure you migrate your domain somewhere else namecheap i'm sure has it godaddy i think godaddy has it as, as well definitely and the things you need to create on your domain provider is what is called a personal personal or child name server so here under advanced you can see in namecheap it is called personal name server okay so you register a name server and namecheap will be responsible your dns provider will be responsible for being the top level name server so if anybody goes to your domain the name server that you registered here on namecheap will be identified as a name server that is responsible for that domain that means that they will redirect it to your server because that's the ip that's registered here in this name server so that's why i'm telling you there are certain domain providers that don't have this so if your domain provider provider does not have this the only thing you can do in that case is just to migrate your domain somewhere else and then you can create a, a name server uh, you can create a child name server or you can create a personal name server sometimes certain dns providers will call it private name server but it's the same thing essentially so once you create that customers can buy cpanel and they don't have to use cloudflare if they don't want to they just use your server automatically so the moment they create a domain the dns records will instantly reflect as your server if you want to see the dns records for that let's just go to dns we want to go to zone editor zone editor so if you come to the zone editor for that the records have automatically been added here if i click on manage i can see all the records the records have automatically been added here you can see even dkim has been added so if they were to set up mail everything should work as it should you can see spf has been added as well all right this has been a slightly long video but i wanted to cover everything so that you can see what to do if you don't want to be using cloudflare every time so before i end the video it's important for you to note that before your customers or before you add another domain your cpanel make sure you go to wherever the domain was bought and you add these name servers so these are your new name servers you can use them wherever you want that's it for this video if you have any questions feel free to let me know